Hello, welcome, finally, it's here. The thing I said I was gonna do. Over a year ago, I set out to make this entire series and I'm just now uploading an episode. So the four of you on Discord that asked, that have been waiting for this, and you're probably dead now. Uh, well, here it is. <laughs> well, kinda, the, the, this video is not, this, this isn't the series. However, in this video, I will be showing you how to import MIDI into Paradit. People have been doing it the wrong way uh, for some time. Just wanted to let everyone know, there's a better way. So if you want to know how to do that, hit subscribe. Maybe hit the little bell icon. I hear that's what YouTubers will say. Uh, so you get notified. And uh, to keep this video from taking... Uh, so I'll just, I'll just shut up and... Yeah. So first what you want to do is you want to just take uh, your Paradigm Utilities EXE and just... And then once that's done... I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, you need this to actually send MIDI from your request to your computer. It's otherwise useless though. But... If that all that sounds like noise and you don't got time for that, then yeah, just go ahead and just throw that. I'm just kidding. Uh, it connects to your quest so you can send MIDI from the game to like a superior drummer or something to make your paradiddle sounds even more better. Yeah, that video is next. So anyway, you're going to need an audio file and a MIDI file, and that's literally all you need. So go ahead and download Paradit, and you want to make sure you're on the latest beta. I don't know how far back it is. I believe it's pretty far back, and there's a lot of missing, very useful missing features that you won't have. So just make sure you're on the latest beta. It's, and then somewhere on your desktop, just make a new folder. Uh, you can name it anything you want. I'm just going to go ahead and place my folder that I'm going to use right here. And this is where you're going to put all your custom songs. So when you make a new track, this is the folder you want. You will also need to have your legally obtained audio and a MIDI file. It's all you need. Once you have those, go ahead and open up Paradit. And when you open it up for the first time, there'll be just a prompt on the middle of your screen. And what you want to do with that is just take the folder that you placed on your desktop that you made, and then up at the top, whenever you click on it, just copy the folder address and paste it in the box. And then you should get to a screen that looks like this. We can go, we're just going to ignore everything over here for right now. And then over here on the left, you'll see a box that says level name. Just go ahead and type in the name of the song, like so, and then hit create level. And you'll see that it's now added to that list here. And if you had other tracks, you can go ahead and favorite it by clicking on the star. It'll bring it up to the top. You don't have to scroll all the way down for it. And then just click edit. And we're just going to create an expert. And we can put on our metadata, but whatever. To keep this video short, just go to song tracks down here. And then it'll open up the folder you place on your desktop just to take your audio file and just drag it in. Uh, it's never easy. It's never easy, is it? Never just drag it in, it's always more. All right, so copy and paste it in your folder. You should be able to just hit open and now it's selected down here. Now you will want to have a separate drum track, but that's not important right now. Uh, we just want to get the MIDI file in here. So up here at the top where you see add instrument on this little drop down menu, we want to find the kick drum, select the kick, add the instrument. That's all you need to do. Do not add any more drums. Just a kick. Once this edit level now it turns yellow, we can go ahead and edit. And then whenever you're in here, while holding down right click, you can now use WASD, space, and shift to move around. Space to go up, shift to go down, WASD, it's Minecraft controls, while you're holding right click. And what you want to do is you want to line this thing up right here, this cursor, directly in the middle of your screen. Uh, you will find the, the urge to just move around looking around the track with WASD, do not do this. Find a position like this and let go of right mouse click and leave it. Uh, as you kind of need to know this to do this, so down here on the bottom left, again, I will go in much greater detail later on. Uh, down here on the bottom left, you'll see this little tab if you click on it. If you have your cursor precision set to four, it's going to be, it's going to snap and jump to every quarter beat. So if I needed to just kind of quickly place a bunch of them, Every single one of these will only be on my quarter beats. I missed a couple, but it's fine. If I wanted to just place eighth beats or sixteenth notes, uh, now I, I'm going to place only sixteenth notes. It won't let me place any more. Now, this is also used if I have it really low. Um, using control and the scroll wheel, you can change it up and down. For moving around the track, I will set it to a low precision just to scroll through the track. Uh, one, obviously, is really fast. You can also use this bar down here to just zoom and click wherever. It would be even easier to navigate if there was colored bookmarks, but we don't have those, so. And then if you press X, you can now switch and toggle between two different presets. Under these settings, I have, it's basically the same thing, except here I have it set ridiculously high, as high as I can with freehand and mouse only on. I'll explain what all this does later on, but it basically just means that this, 
I can have a specific precision and also move around the track pretty quickly. And the other one is for fine tuning and it lets me really get an exact measurement and I can also place anywhere. Um, so once you've got that down, <laughs> you may notice these big, shiny, pretty colors. This is your spectrogram. Just for the sake of this video, all that you need to know is that you'll see these bumps, these little like sharp peaks that are evenly spaced out within your spectrogram. Those are drums. That's it. Take this cursor. I just showed you how to move. Move it right before this peak, not on it. So not here, not here, not here, here, right here. Just to just to explain a little bit, this is no noise. This is silence. Uh, this is noise. The more noise, the higher and brighter this is. This, this stuff, whatever this stuff is. And these are drum beats. So if I were to place a this beat down just on its own, I would put it right here before the bump. Because if you think about it, you, the, you're, you hit the drum and then the sound comes afterwards. So you want the notes to be right here. So with a MIDI file, it's going to place the first MIDI note that's in that file directly on your cursor. So we're going to line our cursor up using the scroll wheel and our cursor precision that I just went over and line it up. And then once it's lined up, pretty much just options in the top left. Then you'll see a tab right here for MIDI importing. Click that and then you hit get and go ahead and find your MIDI file. And then a bunch of numbers that take up pretty much half of all of this that you don't even need to see or know will show up. And then it will automatically be selected to track zero. If I select this, this will be tracks. This is track zero. I already know that I only have one track. Track zero is just kind of BPM information. So track one is where our mini notes will be. And if you have more than one of these tracks, look for the track name. So once you select it over here on this little UI, that could just be all this is and not all this crap. But so when you have the track selected, you want to you want to add the track that you selected. So if you have more than one track, you can add multiple. And ignoring everything else for just right now, select track, press this button, boom, import. Whenever you do that, you'll notice that there is now hella lanes. And there will be a lane for every MIDI note that was in the file. And since we already got it lined up, I'm just going to press enter. And it'll, paste, it'll place down all my MIDI notes. We started with was a kick drum. Those transferred over automatically. So all my kicks now are exactly where they should be. Assuming your MIDI file does line up with your audio, this is what it'll look like. Um, but we have all these MIDI notes and these little diamonds with no drums attached to them. So we're gonna save, exit, select our expert. And then now we need to manually select the drums that correspond with these MIDI notes. If you used a random MIDI file that you found online or don't know what any of these numbers mean, Go ahead and take a screenshot of this. Uh, you can use this as a template. So go down the list and now use this drop down menu on each of these tabs, which these are each of your lanes. And then on this drop down menu, we select the drum that corresponds with this ID, which will also match the MIDI ID that's on it. So Crash 15 is a splash, which I will use a Crash 13 and pitch this bad boy up to two. 38 is a snare. 44 is a hi hat. 49 is a high crash which is the crash 15 52 is a china 57 is a low crash 45 is a tom 2 42 is a hi-hat 46 is a hi-hat 51 is a ride bell 48 is a tom 1 it's a high tom 47 is a mid tom which i'm gonna use a tom 2 43 is a floor tom 53 is a ride edge and then 50 in this particular case is a floor tom for some reason, but it's the, the low floor. So I got to put these in order because they're not for some logical reason that I am unaware of. You know, you think someone who sits and plays Factorio all day that he, you know, that things would be in order. When you're ordering these, the top of this list will be the left side of your kit and the bottom will be the right side. So you can kind of like turn your head 90 degrees to the right and order your drums that way, how they would be whenever you are playing the game. For Crash 15 and 17, I always put the, the high crash on the left unless it's specifically on the right. Sometimes the drummers like to have their high crash on the right, but in most cases, it's always the high crash on the left and the low crash on the right. So since 17 is the low crash, I'm going to put that on the right. There's many reasons why you should do this, but for now, just, it just doesn't really matter. Now with these hi-hats, why there's three of them is because there is a different MIDI value for, for pedal hits, closed and open. I like my open up here my pedal notes to be close to me, or my pedal notes in the middle, and then the normal hits closest to me. Now that everything is in order, we can go ahead and edit the level. And you'll now see that 
everything is assuming that the MIDI file goes to the audio. This one just happened to be whoever made the tab that I used to make this MIDI file knew what they were doing. And this is the first time I've seen this in a very, very long time. It's not correct. These will need edited. This isn't like a, this, okay, cool. I'm done. Uh, it's Wackerman we're talking about here, but this is very, very close and this is playable. So this will require some further editing, but not much. I do not need to place a single BPM on this track. Thank God. And that is how you import MIDI properly and pair edit. Stay tuned for the rest of the series where I will dive in and explain literally everything from MIDI files to editing rock band customs or starting from complete scratch. What the fuck this all means. So see you then.